barbershop conversation, guys. Feel free to hit the subscribe button. Feel free to join the Patreon. I was going to put this video on Patreon, but I'm going to drop it on, on the video. So consider this a Patreon video. All right, I'll upload it to Patreon later. But I got to ask you guys. Ask, I'm going to ask you guys a question, and I'm going to give you guys a couple seconds to answer as I sit in silence. Do you want two, week, two weeks of happiness or a lifetime of happiness? I'll ask the question again. Do you want two weeks of happiness or a lifetime of happiness? Obviously, 99.99999% of you <laughs> said a lifetime of happiness, right? And why I'm asking you this question is because it's tax season. And 80% of y'all have already spent your tax money own shit that's only going to grant you happiness for two weeks whether it's a vacation whether it's a brand new outfit whether it's a down payment on a car um i don't know whatever depreciating asset you want to buy with your tax return i don't know how much you're getting back or um whatever the case may be right and i'm making this video because it's february 2nd I'm, I'm literally staring at my taxes. I'm literally staring at it. I got to take them sometime this week and drop them off. And I just wanted to encourage you and remind you guys and just instill financial discipline and financial literacy. Your tax return is your money. All right. And also keep in mind, you guys don't fully understand this, but you get double taxed in America. And you guys don't understand where I'm coming from. You get taxed on your paycheck. And you get taxed when you buy a soda from the store. If it's 99 cents, it costs $1.08. Cents. I, in, in California, that's what it costs. you know. And so you're getting double taxed your whole life. You go to a store, buy a shirt, state tax. You go to the market, buy a, two pounds of meat, you get taxed. All right? So you're getting double taxed your whole life. And you're walking around pretending, don't unbeknownst to you, don't know what the fuck is going on. And you just live in life like so carefree and unbeknownst to you, the government is fucking ripping you off. And I wouldn't say ripping you off loosely. I'm just saying not knowing the value of eight cents times, just in California, just say eight cents times 10,000 purchases you make a year. How much money is that? I don't know. I'm not doing the math right now, but just take that into account, right? And, and when you think of it in those terms, you're like, fuck. <laughs> right? That's a lot of so you make five thousand purchases a year. You know what I mean? They add up. You know, ten purchases a year. You go to you go to Walmart, you go buy the baby some clothes, you go buy some baby stuff, you go to Costco, you do your you shop for two weeks and you go back two weeks. So every item is a purchase. You know what I mean? If you buy five thousand, ten thousand, ten thousand items a year, you're getting taxed every time. And you're getting and you're getting payroll tax, you know what I mean? So um, um, so I just wanted to reach out and touch you guys. And, and, and what I wanted to say, too, is this. Stop spending your tax return on shit that's depreciating because a rich man told me, not rich, a wealthy man told me a long time ago, if you're waiting on a tax return, you are in the wrong tax bracket. I'll say this again. If you are waiting on a tax return, and mind you, till that age I was 31, 32, I haven't got a tax return in over a decade, right? I was waiting on my two or three thousand dollars, whatever I got for, I don't know, whatever it was. I was waiting on my tax return. And I'm telling you, that shit was spent. Whether it was a PS4, PS3 then, or the brand new Jordans, or uh, I was paying for my vacation for my, because I was a school teacher back then whether I was paying for a summer vacation or whatever the case may be, all right? Just know that that tax money is yours. You have earned it, okay? It's not a blessing. So many poor black people, and I'm saying poor black people because that's what I predominantly hang around. Not poor black people. I, I, I grew up in a predominantly black and Mexican neighborhood, right? Being in California, right? So let's use black and Mexicans, right? 
I would say eight out of ten of my conversations, nine out of ten, eight and a half, nine out of conversations is typically outside of my house, right? Because Dre is Asian. So outside of my house, eight out of ten, nine out of ten conversations I have, right? Is blacks and Mexicans, right? And everyone is always waiting on their tax return. Oh man, I can't. Oh, I, I'm just such a blessing to get my tax return. How much money are you getting back? Oh, I'm getting three thousand dollars. Oh my god, I can't believe I get three thousand dollars. Five thousand dollars, I'm getting back. back. You, you know what I mean? You understand what I'm saying? That is a poor man's mindset, and um, it takes time to get out of that mindset. I'm a decade away from understanding my game plan, which end up working and is still growing. I'm still edifying from it. But that poor man's mindset, your your mom, your grandmother will tell you, you can't afford this. You can't do that. You shouldn't do this. You should save your money. You should do X, Y, Z. Under, understanding all of that, but also understanding. Let's stay on topic, Fred. You paid your taxes. That money is yours. It's not a blessing. Okay. The same, you know what the government is doing? Paying for wars, paying for street pavement, sending bonds and getting interest on it, and then giving you back your money. Don't you know how America exists off the interest of your taxes? You guys never thought of it like that. I know you have it. Seven out of ten just had an aha moment. I know you did. Because it happened to me. Through yourself, you know others, right? And if you don't understand this, you will never breakthrough financially financial literacy is the key being listen they call me cheap in my 20s fred you was the cheapest motherfucker i know in my 40s they call me a genius i'm being real with you guys you understand what i'm saying and 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 i was pretty loose spending money you know what i mean i thought you know so but at the end of the day understand do not spend your fucking tax income because for the in, in, in my opinion for me I'm going to speak for me. In my 20s, when I was a school teacher and training and doing everything, that was the biggest sum of money I got at one time. I'm being real with you. That six, dollars $7,000 I got back from my salary, whatever it was, that was the largest sum of money I got in that year. And I'm being, and I'm being real with you. I was stupid. I went from a, a uh, I should have kept my Honda Civic. If I was smart, if I knew what I knew then, I would have kept my, I had a gray Honda Civic. I had a two-door Honda Civic. I should have kept that Honda Civic for 10 years. But what I did, I bought a Mustang 5.0. Then I went from a Lexus GS300. And then I went from a, to a 745i. And then I, I had a, I, yeah, I had a 745i. And, but I did all that with the poor man's income, right? Because I was, you understand what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, I'm telling you guys, I, I just want to instill and encourage you guys. A man told me and I didn't understand it. I always took stuff, not always, but you know, like when, when you're young and people tell you things and, and you know it, it, it hits home to you, you take it kind of personal and, and you internalize it in a negative way. I'm going to show you, you're this, you're that. He told me, if you're waiting on a tax return, you are in the wrong tax bracket. I'm being real. Like December and January are rough months for me. Like mentally, it, it's rough. I, I recover around March and I'm like, whew, I'm glad I got through that, those months. I'm being real. I'm being as candidly honest as I can. You understand? And uh, um, I just want to encourage you guys. Understand what you're doing financially. All right. That tax return you're going to get is yours. Invest it wisely. I told you when I got, I'll say it again. When I got my tax return, that was the biggest lump sum of money I would get. That was more money than I made a month teaching. And I would do some dumb shit. Would I go buy a chain, go buy a watch? You know, that nigga shit. I'm being real with you guys. I was on that nigga shit. You know what I mean? Because I, I don't know why. I had no reason to. You know, and uh, if I knew then what I knew now, obviously we would all be millionaires, right? 
we would all be financially successful. We would all be wiser. You know, you understand what I'm saying? But I just wanted to, I'm looking at my, my, uh, I'm looking at all these envelopes. I wish I could show you guys, but I'm looking at all these fucking envelopes that I got to deliver to my accountant. And it just hit me. If this video encourages one fucking person, if this 10 minute video, 15 minute video can touch one person to save their tax return, hold on to it and invest it in something that will bear fruit later, this video's done its job. You understand where I'm coming from? So, like, I don't feel sorry for Mike Tyson. I don't feel sorry for MC Hammer. I don't feel sorry for none of them motherfuckers that gets hundreds of millions of dollars and blow it. I don't feel sorry for them because at the end of the day, we pray for opportunities like that. If I had a million dollars, you know, if I had, man, man. So anyways, man, there's a few of us that are getting a tax return back. You understand? Um, uh, and, 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 and that quote is loose too. So don't feel disrespected when I say, uh, if you're waiting on a tax return, you're in the wrong tax bracket because a, a lot of people make great money having a boss and there's nothing wrong with having a boss. If you're smart enough to invest, you know what I mean? And hold on to that job and invest in assets. So there are a lot of us that get tax returns and then we invest it and then we grow and we grow. They stay at the same job for 30 years. That's what my grandfather did. My grandfather was a foreman and uh, he used his money and my and my grandmother used their money wisely and they invested in property, you know, and it actually worked, you know, and um, that was the baby boomer mindset. And this Y2K mindset, it's become entrepreneur or die, you know, where nine to five is such a bad thing. There's nothing. Listen, your nine to five is your primary investor. Understand that your nine to five is a primary investor to your purpose. If your purpose is your nine to five, you just struck gold, you know, because when I graduated from college and became a teacher and a high school basketball coach, I thought that I thought I was in heaven. I was elated. I was excited. There was nothing more I wanted to do was teach from eight to three. And then go to the basketball gym and, and coach basketball. I was in heaven. You know? So from that vantage point, some people realize their dreams. You know? But wherever this message hits you and resonates with you, allow that to, ger to germinate in you and motivate you. You know what I mean? Pull this message. The whole message, entire message may not be for everyone. But if you can pull from this and be inspired, be inspired. All right? And, uh... Um, Let's get this money in 2019, y'all. Let's get these assets, man. Fuck the bullshit, man. Let's hold each other accountable. Get you four friends. Stay in the... Get you a gratitude team. Fuck the bullshit. We ain't playing no more. Here's what I want. Here's what I want. I get, get you a group of four. Because if you just have two, one is going to go MIA for three weeks or a month, month and a half. Get you a group of four people. Get you a gratitude team where... All you do is hold accountable, hold each other accountable with a positive affirmation. You understand where I'm coming from? So, so what I mean by that is, uh, um, nigga, you're acting like a bitch, but God has given you so much. You are better than this. You understand what I'm saying? Like, hold your niggas accountable. And, and, and for all my white subscribers and stuff, put this, <laughs> put this where you need to be, but I'm pretending... I'm talking to my niggas right now, all right? Like that speech, it resonates with me, man. That speech from uh, uh, when that white football player was talking to the black football player when he says, when he basically says you're underachieving. What's the name at? And uh, Denzel Washington is the coach. You guys remember that speech that the white football player told the black player? Basically, you're underachieving. God has anointed anointed you and appointed you one of the most physically gifted specimens on this team and quite possibly in the country as a high school football player and he held them accountable and and, and that's how you hold your friends accountable don't don't dig a ditch and then throw it in them what you do is you dig a ditch to plant seeds i'm gonna say it again you don't dig in life in life hear me out please hear me out this is 
finally we got to the space of this video where we needed to get. You don't dig a ditch to bury your friends in it. You dig a hole in a ditch or whatever you want to do to plant seeds so it can grow, so you can blossom. All right. And at the end of the day, that's what we're going to do. All right. So get you four players, get you four kings, get you four queens, mix it up. You know what I mean? And hold each other accountable. Why the fuck you spend that $5,000 on that fucking vacation? Don't you have a goal? Don't, aren't you an entrepreneur? Aren't you a sole proprietor of, of your corner store or your gym that you have or your online marketing business, your, uh, your, uh, your, um, um, image engraving, you have a social media site, you know what I mean? Invest that shit in you. Invest that shit in you. All right? Please. Please. What what Drake say in trophies? He says, oh, man, what, what that nigga Drake say? Oh, he says, uh, this is between me and God. This is, this is, this is between me and God. I'm, I'm, if I was if I was living life to to please you, my life would be done by now. You know what I mean, man. So, anyways, man, barbershop conversations, man. Let's get this money in 2019. Fuck, it's February 2nd. Let's fucking get this money. We got 365, 33 days that went by. We got 333 fucking 332 fucking days left. Let's fucking get this money. Get yourself. Get yourself a team gratitude. Get yourself team accountability. Get you four motherfuckers that will ride or die with you from an accountability perspective. Not ride or die and then we're going to go beat this nigga's ass. Nah, fuck that shit. That's 1985. That's the drug trade. That's ju- that's the just say no era. Niggas ain't fighting no more. All right, We ain't got to fight in the streets no more. You send a DM and apologize, it's all over. Niggas ain't fighting no more. Get yourself a fucking accountability team and get this money. I don't care if you live in the Delta and down south or if you live in the Harlem, USA, or if you in the Dakotas, or if you in fucking, uh, you just got off the BART in the Bay. Let's get this fucking money. It's 2019. You deserve it. You and your goals deserve to be realized. All right? And I just want to encourage you guys, tell you I love you guys. Uh, I'm sitting here waiting on this boxing card. We got the 652 here in LA. We got eight more minutes sitting here watching Tennessee. This is how far I've been out the loop. I just found out Tennessee is the number one team in the country. I I thought I was going to be watching women's basketball because they said Tennessee is playing Texas A&M. And in my head, those are two really good women's basketball teams, right? Texas A&M has been good this past year. And when I was a kid, uh, Tennessee was the uh, best team in the country. So I cut it on, and it's men's basketball. <laughs> it is men's basketball, man. That's how out of, out of touch I've been this year as it relates to college basketball. But anyways, man. Barbershop conversations, man. Feel free to hit the subscribe button. Let's get this money in 2019. I'll holla. Peace, guys.